Hi, I'm Salome, a media rep from Ghana, and I'm in town meeting TV, hosting a program entitled Metenui, which is from the Ewe language in Ghana, and it means I am able. This is a program that is tailored and powering our youth with disability. The hardest stage of growth by development experts is adolescence through one's useful stage. And with disability could make the stage more challenging. Therefore, there is the need for education, empowerment, and advocacy. It with this in this light that you have to join me as we sit down with great minds to help empower our youth, especially with disability, and talk everything disability. And I have I will be having with me Dr. Sefako Komebu Pomei, an international disability rights advocate and policy analyst. So get connected to us on Town Meeting TV and be a part of this. Thank you. Hello, beautiful people. It's a delight coming your way from Town meeting TV here in Bellington, Vermont. We are super excited today, coming your way with conversations on a topic that many people have overlooked and we want to really make time to talk about it. The topic is on disability. Disability honestly happens to people who don't really go to the market to say that we are going to buy this form or that form of disability. And therefore, it's an open-ended discussion for everybody to come on board for us to talk about. But we have one personality who had stood up and made up her mind that she was going to be a voice for people with disability. And the reason why we are seated here today. So in different series, we are going to talk about disability, but narrowing it down to the youth with disability, because we realize that in the life of the youth, it is the hardest stage in the process of growth. And their psychological and mental health is very necessary. So we would want to boost their morale, we want to empower them, we want to encourage them so that they move on this ladder in life with so much hope, with so much knowledge, and with so much confidence. So today I have with me my own sister. She's a professor and right now is the director of diversity, equity, and inclusion uh, lecturer in the College of Nursing and Health Sciences at the University of Vermont. Her personal experience as a woman of color with a physical disability has shaped her journey as an international advocate for people with disability from around the globe. In fact, she brings on board experiential knowledge, and that is something good. It's not like she's going to learn and come in to tell us, but she has the experiences herself, and she's a great tool for us today. Welcome. Uh, Auntie Sefako. I call her Auntie Sefako. So you are welcome to our program that we have entitled Metenui, meaning I am able. And it was derived from the Ewe language in Ghana. And because of the inclusiveness, wherever you are all over the world, when we say Metenui, you say I am able. That is the meaning. So welcome. Thank you so much, Auntie Salu. Um, I'm so grateful to be here with you today. Mm -hmm. And also, 
um, very much appreciative for the fact that we'll be talking about this, that we have to start doing something exactly. in this country. We have to start talking exactly. as much as also sharing our experiences with Ghana mm -hmm. or Africa. Mm -hmm. And um, I am so blessed, let me use that word, blessed to be on this podium with you to actually discuss um, what is disability today. Yeah. Uh, thank you also for agreeing to make sure that we don't just um, do it in English language. Exactly. We want to project our identity as Ghanaians mm -hmm. and also speak our language so that other people can also understand and also maybe speak other African languages exactly. and, and embrace uh, the spirit of I'm able, mm -hmm. um, which is my t the title of my book. Mm -hmm. And thank you for um, adopting the I'm able spirit because that is one thing that I wish every person would have, mm -hmm. um, be it a, a person with disability or not, that could be the place of starting inwardly that exactly. I'm, I'm able, I'm right? Able. So maternity, maternity in the Ewe language, as you said, is I am, able. I am able. And as we have started this program, nothing would be our obstacle, mm -hmm. our barrier, our blockade. Mm -hmm. We are able to make it work so that we change the negative narratives about disability. Exactly. Thank so you. we want to begin. Uh, before we narrow on the youth, as we said, we really need to know what disability is. So explain disability to the lame man, the lame person, when we talk about disability. What is disability? So maybe this will be the teacher part of me. Exactly. <laughs> uh -huh. I, and on topics like this, uh, I would like to break it down into different levels. Mm -hmm. um, as I work across Africa with my organization, Enlightening and Empowering People with Disabilities in Africa, as you know, uh, we have different meanings to disability. Okay. And I will start from the bigger umbrella, which is the UN Convention on the Rights of People with Disabilities, okay. which is a bigger tool, or we call it the universal tool that every country is looking up to and also forming or writing their disability laws. Mm -hmm. So UNCRPD is the name we always say simple. And how UNCRPD defines disability. Then we will come down to the Americans with Disability Act, that is ADA, mm. simply what the ADA says about disability. Maybe we will go to Ghana, our roots, exactly. how do we define disability? Mm -hmm. I did some work with uh, the Kenyans um, recently, and it was very vibrant for me to know that they even have what we call a uh, disability uh, awareness creation book with wow. addition to their um, level of um, working with people with disability with addition to their disability law. Uh, wow. In Tunisia, which is North America, well, North Africa, sorry, we will look at how they also look at disability okay. and also maybe Germany. I'm trying to bring it down to everybody so that as much as this discussion is concerned, you will not be limited in, in the definition or what it entails in terms of different cultures right. and different meanings. So right. the UNCRPD says, mm -hmm. And I quote, a disability is a condition caused by an accident, trauma, genetics, or disease, which may limit a person's mobility, hearing, vision, speech, or mental function. Wow. In other words, you and I, where we are right now, mm -hmm. if you confirm to me that you once had a trauma before, mm -hmm. which we all carry, or you have some issues of genetics yeah. or disease, mm -hmm. I would say that you have a disability. Wow. Definitely. And I always break it down to the fact that if you have that particular understanding of what it is, then you know how to work with, to work with yeah. it. Exactly. So the same thing applies to the ADA. The ADA defines disability the same way as the UNCRPD. Okay. Yeah. When we go to Ghana, mm -hmm. Ghana, according to the Persons with Disability Act, which we call Act 715, yeah. um, a disabled person in Ghana is defined as someone with a physical, mental, or sensory impairment that limits their ability to mm -hmm. perform major life activities. The impairment must be or must also create physical 
cultural or social barriers. Oh. That is our Ghanaian yeah. Act 715. Mm -hmm. When we go to Kenya, according to the Kenyan Person with Disability Act, a, disab a disability is a physical, sensory, mental, or other impairment that negatively impacts a person's social, economic, or environmental participation. Mm. Mm. That mm. is from Kenya. Mm. And the Kenyan, as I said, they have disability awareness creation booklets, mm. including any physical, um, according to them, they said disability can include any physical, sensory, psychological, or other impairment, condition, or illness that has or is perceived mm perceived by significant sectors of the community mm. to have a substantial or long-term effect on the individual's ability. Mm. Now, I'm trying to bring all those things to our knowledge with the diction that people use to define disability, but there is something recurring. Mm -hmm. When we go to South Africa, yeah. South Africans define disability as the loss Loss. The loss of opportunities wow. to participate in society equally with others. Wow. A this loss. Can be, yeah, this can be due to impairment that are physical, sensory, psychological, developmental learning, neurological, or others. And this impairment can be temporary, permanent, or episodic. Mm -hmm. That is in South Africa. Mm -hmm. So we went to South and uh, we went to West Africa, yeah. East Africa, yeah. South Africa. Let's see North Africa, Tunisia. Okay. A disability to them, they said, is a wide range of impairment that can be physical, sensory, intellectual, or mental health related. Wide range of yeah. impairment. Okay. Finally, I want us to dive back to Germany. Okay. Disability is defined as a limitation of physical, psychological, or mental ability that lasts longer than six months and prevent the person from living a life typical of their age. Oh, so they, they have a time frame for, for, for six months. Yeah. Yeah. And even that one, it's, we do have it here. That is where we say short term okay. or temporary okay. or long term. Okay. They were just specific about the months. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, when I want to talk about this broadly, I always dive deep into the UNCRPD. Okay. Because that is the tool that every country across the world, except the US, which hasn't yet ratified the convention. That's a different topic altogether. I know, right? Yes. I know. So I will dive deep there, I, but I, I want to bring our knowledge to the fact that we have definitions, we have, um, let me say, descriptions, exactly. we have terms, yeah. we have accepted that there is a word called disability. disability. But what it entails to have a disability is, which is a question I'm actually throwing to you right now, as the, the, the UN Convention defines, a disability is a condition yeah. caused by trauma, mm -hmm. disease, mm -hmm. or genetics, which may limit a person's mobility, mm -hmm. hearing, vision, speech, or mental function. Now, my question is, have you ever had a trauma in your life? Yes, I have. And this, I know our audience would, would be like, trauma, no. I can assure you we all carry trauma carry some... from one state to exactly. another. They are all different traumas, but we all have a universal trauma, which happened in 2019. What was that? A universal trauma. That's uh, 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 our life to COVID. Perfect. Yeah. So if you were here 2019 during COVID, mm -hmm. that means you have trauma. Exactly. Because COVID struck unknowingly. Nobody... Unexpected. Yes, you knew. Uh, we will say that in the U.S., we had a different experience, and you people in Ghana, we you had, also a had a different, different experience. experience. Exactly. But the reality is we did not know anything about this. We were all stuck in our rooms. Mm -hmm. At some point in our lives, I could remember my family, 
we were even afraid to open the door for fresh air. Wow. Because the, the reality was, we were scared to our bones that if you open the door, they don't know what is actually it is, it coming is an in. air blowing, exactly, right? Exactly. It is an air blowing. So you so we were stuck in the room more than months. It started like days. Mm -hmm. We, those of us who were in the classrooms, we thought we would go back to class. Within and then we, a short time. Exactly. And we realized. That trauma has mm. been there. Mm. And that uh, has been one thing that we carry from one state to another. Now we are teaching with different methods of teaching. Exactly. And carry that trauma along. Our students, our youth are part of this trauma together with mm -hmm. that. But the fact is, trauma has different levels. And okay. yes. And here lies the case that we have apportioned the word disability to only some few or a uh, group of people. Mm -hmm. But I want to nullify that right now that okay. everybody has a disability. In fact, I like the fact that you um, opened this uh, discussion by saying that it's an open-ended class exactly. or club, right? Exactly. And anybody falls in it any time. Mm -hmm. But the understanding now, or the school of thought that we have now is from 2019, yeah. as at now, as we are moving, everybody has one disability or the That's other. That's anybody that witnessed COVID. The era of COVID. Yes. That means there's something you are carrying on your mind. Yes. Exactly. You are always scared. Mm. You are always traumatized. Mm. You are always afraid of the a friend of the, the the future of the unknown. Exactly. You are always carrying that shiva along. Mm -hmm. You don't know how the next day will be because COVID still lingers around. Yeah. COVID is still around, yeah. and the interesting piece is it's part of disability. Okay. Because you cannot function to do certain things. Mm. That's that's one thing. That is the underlying fact. If we embrace that part of it, that this is called disability, you name it. That's right. If you name it that, well, I have disability. And that is the place that we can start from, that which type, which form, what do we care for, what do we do? Okay. And so I just want to say that, uh, in short, disability is part of humanity. That is wow. one thing that I, I talk about generally, that it's part of humanity, whether you like it or not, yeah. whether you accept it or not, you embrace it or not. It comes in the morning to some people, comes to some people in the afternoon, and comes to some people in the evening. Um, for instance, as a person with physical disability, if, if I want to share my story with you, mm -hmm. my came, I'll say, not really early in the morning. Good. Yeah, because uh, my came, I walked before, and then I also saw life in terms of uh, being able in quotes, yeah. right? Right now, I don't think anybody is able, but yes. Yeah, yeah because um, I know how jumping is or how it feels you've, to jump. Yeah, I you, have jumped. You, you did uh, all that, that before. as a little girl. Yeah, and then at the age of eight, co polio struck. Wow. Just as COVID struck. Wow. Yeah, just as polio struck in those years. And COVID struck this, uh, I mean, everybody saw what COVID did. And some people are still going through uh, let's leave trauma aside, but some people have some things coming out from COVID and they are no more functioning like how they, are, they have to function. And even if, just to add a little bit to that and then you continue, on, I, my mind goes back to when we talk about people that move out of their homes in their cars and by the time maybe an accident struck, there is something about an amputation. There are people that other health Related it, yeah, issues, yeah. and then therefore there is some sort of uh, uh, amputation, maybe somewhere, not only to the physical side, but mm -hmm. like you are saying, the, the trauma side. Yeah. So it's something we got to talk about. Yeah, and the fact that you mentioned amputation, something just came to my mind. So I'm working right now with one of our reputable people in Ghana, mm -hmm. and um, I mean, when I mention the name, everybody will know. But yeah, mm -hmm. what happened was mm -hmm. this person had uh, diabetes, wow. which is invisible disability. That's another thing. And uh, we don't consider invisible disabilities most of the time in our culture. Mm -hmm. And that is one thing maybe we'll talk about in the next um, episode that we'll have. Mm -hmm. But here lies the case. He has diabetes. And where, where it got to, he had to go through that amputation. 
Wow. Presently, he spent six months in the room without anybody knowing about the situation, without seeing the son because he's locked himself up. And the wife who knows me very well called me that, hey, your father, because he's an elderly, elder, elderly person that I call daddy. You look up to yes. as a father. Your father is not feeling well. You need to talk to your father like a child. That was the, wow. mother, the woman's uh, expression that you need to talk to your mm. father like a child mm. because he doesn't want anybody to see him. He doesn't want to go out to have fresh air because he's amputated. So... If we embrace this ability that is part of humanity. It's part of humanity. Mm. And it is something that can be caused at any time in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening. Why don't we just move forward if this is part of our, our acceptance or this is the reality on the ground? But because of different layers of stigma, stereotypes, mm. labels, mm and everything about disability connotes negativity. Okay, so let me just ask you a simple question then to add up to it. In our, in our part of our world, you realize that stigmatization is very, very on the increase or on the high. Mm. Uh, how do you find issues related to disability on the side of stigmatization? How do you, how, do you, how, how, how will, will you, uh, talk about it or how will you measure it mm. in a, on this part of uh, 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 the world? In terms of being in America? Yeah. And like yeah. Comparing that, that comparative you, analysis yeah, exactly. of Africa or Ghana. And, then, and I would say that um, the, the stigma is the same. Wow. Yeah. Stigma is the same, I can assure you. As, I mean, I've been exposed to so many types of disabilities in the U.S. system, which I didn't know before. Mm -hmm. And I've been exposed to different disability types in Africa, mm -hmm. which we will not talk about maybe in Ghana also. Okay. And knowing, and even Europe, I've been exposed because I school in Denmark. Mm -hmm. So in the Scandinavian countries, I have explored that aspect of wow. knowing myself more to be associated with different groups of people with disabilities also but the stigma, label, or anything that you can think about negatively about this is very much the same. And when I start talking about how to um, remove barrier or how to change the negative narratives about stigma, about disability, I think I was drained. I was tired. I was... Um, I was really exhausted of just talking to people to people and especially knowing very well where I'm coming from and where I am now and also what I have to do. I just realized that I have to put it on paper. Mm -hmm. And that led me to write my book, I'm Able. Good. Because my, my book, I'm Able, it's not about me. Mm -hmm. It's about our experiences together, even though it is my story, my memoir. Every little thing I talk about in every chapter talks about the people with disability across the world. And that, I think, could be the next level of our discussion around stigma, because stigma in every form is stigma. Whether you are in America, you are in Ghana, you are in Jamaica, wherever you are, nobody sees a person with disability with any life of dignity. Wow. Nobody sees us very productive. Nobody sees us doing something um, as human. So that's why a little bit of effort, a little bit of you as a human being you would do, it is escalated. It is an inspiration for people. It is something that people project or put on a very high pedestal. But you are just living a normal life as a person. But the reality is they don't expect you to live that life of independence and dignity because of the stigma. I thank you very much for honoring to do this program because uh, in the first place, enlightening us on the different aspects of disability has woken up some kind of emotions within me and a passion to let people also really understand from where I am coming from and what I do uh, I really want to now echo my voice mm -hmm. 
Because when it comes to disability, we have come to understand that it's not a one-person show. Mm -mm. And it's not something that somebody goes through it and you feel that it is the only person's issue. No, because I've come to understand that listening to what you are saying means that even if somebody doesn't begin in court as somebody with disability, but maybe might end up like your father being an example, the people around them will also suffer the psychological effect mm -hmm. when it comes to yeah. disability. And it's something that we all want to rally and come together. And one of the issues why you decided to do this is because we will put this up as a resource reference point for people that want to learn and then also want to get up together to fight in court uh, stigmatization and other right issues and other things. All these things will come up in our, 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 our subsequent discussions. discussions. But I, I really want us today to begin to give hope because of your book, I Am Able. So any series that we do, you are here because you might not have that ample time to get one on one. Sifako, I want this, I want that, I want that. So we want to refer people to town meeting TV mm -hmm. that they can be able to get this as a resource material yeah. that they will be able to deal with the issues of disability. So I want us to quickly, uh, since we've got the definition, what are some of the forms of disability? How will you say, because running up and then going to our subsequent ones, we want to know the forms of disability. Yeah, thank you so much for that. We have, simply let me put it into two bigger forms. We have okay. the visible and the invisible types of disabilities or forms of disabilities. Okay. And anybody can have any of them or multiple disabilities. Mm. I, for instance, I have multiple disabilities. The only one you see is the physical one, okay. which is my polio, which affected my legs, which are paralyzed, right? Mm -hmm. I have what we call dyscalculia. Dyscalculia has to do with mathematics. And that is one thing that we don't even have name for in Ghana. In Ghana, exactly. Exactly. So I, I, I have that particular way of dealing with it myself, mm. which I realized that I need to talk to the young one now to be open, mm. to embrace it, mm. to be able to have, you know, the other part of me, which actually makes me uh, do this work is there are resources. Okay to be able to tell the child that there are resources to help you perform better. In other words, what I went through, I don't want to go, I don't want you to go through that. So we have visible disability and invisible disability. Okay, I would, want to, the, I would want to hold you in there. So yeah. we've come to understand that when it comes to disability, we have the visible disability, which is clear. Yeah. Immediately you see the person, you find out that maybe some part of the physical body, yeah. it's not there. So that is the physical disability. And then we have the invisible disability. Yeah. Just uh, on that, I would want us to end. And then on our next conversation, mm. we go deep okay. into the various forms of disability. But before we go, look into the camera and tell somebody who has now come to realize that disability is not just about the physical deformity, but it's about something that goes beyond that. And we are all into that. I want you to give hope to a young girl or a young boy listening to us right now and tell them that they are able, metenui. Thank you so much. Yeah, so, um as I just started, or we just started this discussion, disability is part of humanity. As um, our host uh, expressed, nobody went to the market to buy type of disability, no. I'm trying to just break it down for everybody from childhood to the old age, because even those who are old, our parents, they are still struggling with the realities on the ground that they don't belong to that type of group. They don't belong to disability group. And the fact is, this is the biggest or the largest uh, group uh, of minority that I will talk about later. 
because when you talk about disability, it's about you. It can be visible or invisible, and everybody has one or the other. Thank you so much. So, thank you for, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Sefako, for being with us today. Uh, it's an enlightenment, and we we'll want to see you again to continue on this discussion on disability. This is Town Meeting TV. Thank you. I'm Salome. <laughs>